Okay guys, in this uh, first video I'm going to introduce um, some pretty basic foundational concepts. These are concepts that you're probably already familiar with, but um, I'm going to introduce them just to make sure that everybody's on the same page. Um, we'll, we'll build on these concepts as the year goes on. So, um, start off with the concept of, we have three concepts. The first one is going to be position. The second one is displacement. And the third is velocity. So, as I said, I suspect you guys already know something about these three different concepts, but let's go into them in a little bit of detail. Position, this is really pretty straightforward. As the name implies, this is just the location of something, some object or particle in space. Um, we typically give position some value in terms of, it could be in terms of x, it could be in terms of y, it could be in terms of z, if it's along the x or y or z axis. Um, if it's along a radius, we might give it a value of r for some sort of radial position away from the center if it's, um, if it's along a radius. Uh, so th these are common uh, symbols that we'll use to, to represent position in, 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 in different ways. Uh, <clears throat> displacement, um, this is similar to another concept called distance, but it's a little bit different. The, the displacement is, is simply the change in position. So if it's the change in position along an x-axis, we would call that delta x. If it's a change in position along a y-axis, that's delta y, etc. Um, the distinction between displacement and distance, to, to remind you, is, is this. Imagine if I were to run one mile east and then turn around and run one mile back west. Um, I might ask you, uh, what distance did I, did I cover? You would say two miles. I went one mile east and then one mile west. But if I asked you what's my displacement, you'd have to say zero because my starting position and my ending position are the same. I return to my starting position. So um, there's a sense in which direction is relevant when we discuss displacement, whereas when we think of position or when we think of distance, the direction we move is, is not relevant. A quick word on, on this delta x, I want, I want to talk a little bit about notation, specifically the notation that your book uses. Your book defines, the book we're using, defines delta x as x minus x naught. So if we're delta y, it would be y minus y naught. Um, I just want to let's say a quick word about this, this notation here. Uh, this x with the subindex 0, this means x at some point we're calling the 0 point. Um, usually we're going to be thinking about x position as a function of time, so what this subindex means is the position x at time 0. Um, now, this is, a, this is the same thing as what, uh, for those of you who took physics with me last year, our, this is exactly the same thing as what our book was using last year, which was delta x equals x final minus x initial. It's the same thing, only here we're saying x, this is essentially, you can think of it as x at time t minus x at time zero. It's the same idea, final minus initial, but um, slightly different notation. And this is, this little zero here, this would be known, this would be called, we would say this x and then the zero is called not n a u g h t x not. So if you hear me say x not, I'm referring to this. Um, and then velocity. Let's think about what that is. That's similar to speed, but um, again, uh, it, direction is relevant. So if I went one mile east and one mile west, my displacement is zero. So my velocity we would say is zero. Um, in other words, we define velocity, which by the way is abbreviated with a v. We say that v is equal to the change in position, delta x, over the change in time, delta t. We could rewrite that x minus x naught divided by t minus t naught. And this is first of many equations of significance. So I'll go ahead and uh, put a little box around it. That means that this is an important equation. We'll use this equation quite a bit. All right, so three... Uh, Again, pretty straightforward concepts. Let's, let's, let's unpack this a little more. Let's go into a little bit more detail. Um, maybe a good way to think about it would be do an example. Uh, imagine that I've got a car here moving along the road. And we can think of the road as 
sort of an x-axis. So here's my car. Here it is. I'll have to excuse my drawings. That's my car. And it's moving here along this x-axis. We, um, we, in, in, in other words, we could think of this right here. This would be, maybe we, this is our starting position. This would be x naught. And maybe we'd like to know where along our road, our x-axis, the car is um, at any given point in time, right? We'd like to know where it is at, you know, at a certain point in time. And a, a nice way to do that would be to have an expression that gives us the position as a function of time. And so let's make one up. Let's say that the position of the car x is given by the equation 2 minus 4t plus 2t squared. And so here you can see we've got an expression that will now allow us to find, just put this here, this will allow us to find the position x as a function of time t. And you can see the t's working in two different terms here, one squared, one's not. What does that mean? Uh, we'll unpack it here in a little, a little bit of detail. Um, maybe the first thing to do give us a sense for how this car is moving over time, where, where it is, would be just to create a table of values. This is a pretty low-tech way of, of um, you know, thinking about how this thing's moving. So let's go ahead. We could make a table of values. Um, so maybe we've got, uh, we'll plug in a variety of times, and then we'll look at the x's at those times. So, um, Okay, let's see, we could say at time zero. Where is the car at time zero? In other words, what is x naught? What is, where is the car at t equals zero? Well, you can see that at t equals zero, these two t terms vanish, right? They're, they're, they're zero. And so this reduces to x equals two. Now, I haven't given you any idea of units. Standard units would be using um, for position would be meters. So we can imagine that the car is at two meters at the beginning. So in other words, this here is x naught is equal to two. We'll fill that in later. <clears throat> All right, well, where, is, where is it after one second? Where is it at t equals one? If I plug in a one for t here, where, where am I? Well, that's two minus four plus two, that's zero. So the car is at the zero meter mark starts at the two meter mark and goes in the negative direction. It's moving initially in the negative direction, which I'm going to imagine being to the left here along this x-axis. Um, it ends up somewhere over here, right? So this would be, our x1 would be over here. This would be x1. All right, well, let's keep going. Where is it after two seconds? Where is it, is it at x equals two, or sorry, t equals two? Uh, plug in a two here, we get two minus eight. What is this? That's two squared, four times two is eight. So I'm at two, I'm back to my starting position. In other words, this x naught is the same thing as x sub two, and it's equal to two in this case. This was zero, x one was zero. So it, what has happened? Well, it's, it, it went in the negative direction for a second, and then went back in the positive direction for a second, ending up at the same place it started. All right, let's do one more second t equals 3, but what do we have here? 2 minus 12 plus, what is this, 18? That's 8. So after 3 seconds, the car is now, let's say it's over here somewhere, that's x3. And that's equal to 8. These are positive, of course. Let me just put a little plus there to indicate the direction of the axis. And so now we have the positions for 3 different seconds, right? It goes negative direction, positive direction, and then positive direction again to end up at eight after three seconds. So it gives us some sense of how this thing is moving, at least for the first three seconds of its motion. So we've got positions here. The next thing that might be interesting to look at is, could we, could we determine its displacement for these three seconds? Could we go ahead and figure out how is this thing getting displaced over these three seconds? So let's, we can maybe make a couple other little uh, table table values here. Let's imagine, let's try to see if we can figure out the delta x over a variety of intervals. So let's say we've got, uh, we're going to come up with a couple different, a few different time intervals and let's see what the delta x is for those time intervals. So let's, let's start 0 to 1. 
what is the displacement zero to one? Well, that's x, remember how we define displacement, x minus x naught. Well, x at time one is zero. X at x, x naught is this, two, positive two. So that's two, sorry, zero minus two, which is negative two, right? So for the first second, the displacement is negative two, which makes sense. We started at positive two and we ended at zero in that first second. So we went two units, two meters perhaps, in the negative direction. Okay, well let's think about from one to two seconds. Well, what's, what's, uh, what are my x and what's my x naught? My x now is two and my x naught is zero. So then we have two minus zero or positive two. That's my delta x for that interval. And then we can think about from two to three, what's my, my displacement for that time interval? Well, here, my, this is my x naught now is two, and my x is eight, so this is plus six. You can see the, the, the displacements there as a, as a function of time. How about this, what if I ask you my delta t for one, or sorry, from zero, two seconds. What if I thought about the, that whole two second interval? What's my, what's my delta x there? Well, I started at zero, at, at time equals zero, and at time equals two, right? At time equals two, I'm back at that two meter mark. In other words, my displacement there is zero. I haven't, my position doesn't change between these two time intervals. Um, how about for the entire thing, zero to three seconds, what's my displacement? Well, that's my final eight minus two, that's plus six for the entire interval. So hopefully that makes some sense how I was able from these position coordinates, I was able to determine displacement over those, those same time intervals. Um, if we do one more, let's, let's add in one more column here and we could think about the velocity. Now I've got to say a word about this before we do that. Let's go back to this velocity equation we had here. This is the velocity, which is a change in a position over a change in time. So if we're going to calculate velocity, what are we going to do? We're going to take um, uh, these, dis these x values here, or these displacement values, and we're going to divide them by times. I want to point out something that, that maybe is, is pretty obvious to you, but when you do this, what are you actually calculating? Well, you're calculating the, the change in position over some finite time interval. Now, I want to point out that that does not let us know the velocity at any moment of time. All it allows us to calculate, in fact, is an average velocity. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put a bar over this V. And that bar, I think you know, indicates that this gives us an average velocity. It doesn't give us the velocity at any moment. In other words, it doesn't allow us to figure out an instantaneous velocity. And we'll discuss in the next video how you might find the instantaneous velocity. But let's see, so here's our equation, delta x over delta t. So let's go ahead for our car and figure out the average velocities for these time intervals. Well, this delta x is negative two over one second, that's negative two, and let's say it's meters per second. Well, one to two is positive two over one second. That's positive two meters per second. Two to three seconds, it's positive six meters in one second. That's positive six meters per second. And how about for the first two seconds? What's the average velocity for that interval? Well, the delta x is zero, so the average velocity is zero. And then for the entire trip, well, it's six over three seconds. That's positive two in whatever our units are, meters per second, perhaps. All right, so that's a little bit here. Um, hopefully this made sense using this example of this car moving. Um, that gives us some idea of how this thing is moving in terms of, first of all, its position, its displacement, and then finally its velocity. Uh, we might make note of the fact that the velocity here is changing with respect to time. I haven't discussed that yet, but um, that'll come a little bit later. Uh, next video, we'll think about a little bit more about velocity and we'll think about calculating the instantaneous velocity.